right, testing one, two, three. <coughs> testing, testing, testing. I've got the microphone up a little bit better, a little bit closer to my face. I mean, I can't basically put it any closer to me without like eating it. So hopefully this helps. We'll have to work up the gains up and stuff. So. Yeah, so I haven't been on for a bit. I've been, uh, yeah, life gets in the way. But uh, um, I've also uh, been working on some, uh, some new quests. Uh, missions, sorry. So working on some other missions to do. Um, and uh, yeah, just trying to get those worked out and stuff. But in the meantime, I got uh, given a challenge which I thought was pretty cool, um, in that uh, to try the existing decks, um, just to sort of take my mind off what I've been working on, so try the existing me uh, missions with uh, a different type of deck, because um, I pretty much stick to the sort of the two sort of general types, um, the pretty common types. Uh, and I've never used uh, what's called a Vilya deck before. Uh, so uh, I went about making some sort of versions of the cards that sort of would generally appear in a Vilya type deck um, and uh, here I am I'm going to try one out now uh, the Vilya deck for those that don't know is uh, it's, it's essentially the, the heroes are centered around the, the, the deck is centered around the heroes uh, uh, the hero Alrond um, who is uh, Arwen's father um and uh, he has access to a ring uh like one of the like like the one ring but if you if you remember the start of lord of the rings it's you know it's like the three rings that were given to the elves and the five rings that were given to the dwarves and the seven rings that were given to the humans and and then the one ring to rule them all so alron's ring is called vilia uh and it's a it's a pretty cool sort of deck it's it basically it's designed really pretty much around the concept of putting things into play for free so you have some high cost cards in your deck that you normally wouldn't really have because they're just it, it's unlikely you're going to get them out anytime soon so um, so there's a lot of high high cost uh, attachments and allies because Vilya will let you uh, reveal the top card of your deck and then put it into play for no cost um, now you can't put event cards into play obviously because they need to actually be played they're not actually put into play um, so uh, it really only applies to allies and and event uh, and to attachments what magic would essentially call permanence um, and uh, that's cool <laughs> that's really really cool uh, getting a card for free is pretty good and so you've got this you know mechanics around it to sort of make it easier to know what that card is you can you can do what's called the blind Vilya, which means that you um, you just have a have a stab in the dark and so hope hope that it's an attachment that can actually be used you know, as not an event because then it gets thrown away. Um, and, but and so one of those things is is Stargazer. So uh, the Stargazer is an ally who lets you look at the top five cards of your deck and then put them back in the order that you want. And so you put it back in you know a specific in order so that you know that when you then Vilya, it'll be the first one you get and away you go. So it, it's kind of it's a lot trickier to sort of manipulate and use this deck than what I'm used to doing. My decks are usually pretty simple because I'm a I'm a simple person. I don't really muck around in terms of you know tricks and stuff. Um, so I was never the greatest magic player in the world. Um, so uh, yeah, this is this. It takes a lot of thinking. You got to think <laughs> to use this deck, and I'm not really I'm not really a big fan of thinking about the deck because I'm too busy. Thinking about the actual issues as well. I can't get too bad at that, too many things at once. So I've got the um, the the Trek versions of those cards uh, here. So um, normally you would have quite commonly you would have um, well the most famous of these decks is the one made by a user on RinsDB called Seaston, who I think his real name is Chris. Um, and he's a you know he's a legend, a legend of the of the Lord of the Rings community. He obviously he knows what he's talking about. You know, a lot of people pay attention to when he speaks. A lot of people pay attention, and uh, yeah, so he's he's is pretty much the the benchmark, the template of the Vilya deck. 
and there's been more of, you know since then of course but um he's it he's is pretty much the benchmark um so he's he's one you know, has uh arwen alron and um tactics aowen so that he has a little bit a little bit more combat abilities um and i did try that for a bit i tried had a couple of goes at some quests um some missions with with those things um uh, in uh, the other challenge that I was set, uh, which is the other challenge was to play the Grey Havens um, scenarios using Trek cards. <laughs> so I've been doing that in the last couple of nights, uh, playing the Grey Haven scenarios uh, using the Trek cards. And yeah, I, I, at first it sounded like a cool idea because it meant that. Um, because you already have in the Trek rules, you of course have your ship with you, and in the great the Grey Havens scenarios is uh, the storyline is what introduces the concept of the ship, and so it sort of makes sense, right? It all, all kind of makes sense. Um, where if you're playing solo, you're you play with uh, one of the ships called the um, can't remember now, <laughs> whatever the ship's called, and uh, you uh, if because you're solo. Uh, there's meant to be other people playing with you so because you saw you get to play one of the other ships as well and so when that was happening that worked out quite well like so the first quest that you do voice voyage across uh Balagir, was quite fun because you had the your sh the trek ship and the ship that you meant to play uh which I, i'm ashamed that i can't remember what it's actually called the ship that you're meant to use um the dawn Ch i want to say dawn chaser I say Dawn Chaser, but something to do with Dawn. Right. I'm embarrassed now, so I'm gonna pull it out just so I know what it is. The Dream Chaser. There you go. So you play with the Dream Chaser and with your Trek ship, and so that worked out quite fun. Um, but then I was finding in some of the other quests that, uh, especially Fate and Raid because you don't actually use the ships in that stage so then you would go back to using your trek ships and stuff and it just didn't quite work it was just i mean the ship was just i mean the decks the trek cards were essentially just a bit too op so i, I essentially just i mean i smashed these quests um, this was really fun and then i just smashed these and so it was kind of boring um, um this was still a bit of a challenge even using the trek cards um that was good um funnily enough this was then uh, I got hammered the first time I attempted this quest, uh, because, and mainly because you can't use your ship. The trek, card, the trek ship is essentially pointless, and so you just use the normal characters and stuff, and so it just didn't really work and stuff. So it was at, um, it was at this point uh, when I then saw the other challenge that I had about using a different type of deck, and so I started using the Vilja deck, the Vilja version of that deck, and then went back and played these again. And still smash them um but then it was able to use it to beat this one and then went on and did this one as well uh, which is the one i just finished last night actually uh temple of the deceives which is it's just awesome it's just an awesome awesome quest um the designer of this quest should be proud of themselves it's just a lot of fun very rp um great stuff it actually uh I, I had a, especially had a, a really good uh, good time with it because uh, the format of this quest is very similar to a game I've been working on for like five years. <laughs> the, one, of those, one of those situations where you know you work uh, working on stuff. The one day it'll be published. You know, one day I'll get it to Kickstarter or you know something like that. So this game idea that I've been playing around with my friends with and stuff for years. Um, it's very, uh, I, I wouldn't say very similar, but it's similar. It has a similar sort of idea to it. So, yes, yeah, so I was very, I was pleasantly uh, surprised when I played this quest, and um, it was really, really cool. Um, I haven't moved on to the others just yet, but yeah. So I tried those with the with the V deck. So now, uh, because the quest, uh, the the uh, the challenge was to play my missions with them, so I'm going to do that. Um, now I was, when I was doing the Dream Chaser, Dawn Chaser or whatever it is, um, quests, they, the Grey Havens quests, I was using a different ship. I was using, um, I was using a ship called Slayer, which is a Vulcan ship, funnily enough. So 
So, oh. <laughs> oh, what's happened here? I will treat them with a lot of respect. <laughs> Let's fix those up. Um, no, no, it's just, it's just gone. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I don't know why I can't see it. Maybe it's in here. Ah, there it is. Ah, Dave. Um, yeah, so I was using. Well, it's actually it's interesting. This, this is this is why these cards were sort of set aside. So when I was playing the other quests, I was using a different ship, the Solaire, um, and the Solaire is very powerful if you have a Vulcan hero. Uh, if you have a Vulcan hero, at least one Vulcan hero, all of your heroes gain plus two will, which means um, the ship and your three heroes all gain plus plus two will. So questing really was not an issue. <laughs> like questing, most of the time Deanna quested on her own, um, and then you know I sort of chipped in the ship as well, since the ship wasn't doing anything else anyway, and it doesn't exhaust when it goes when it commits to a mission. So essentially, it was just Deanna and the ship systems together basically beating every single will test essentially I don't think I found a single will test or um, quest test so um, and the other difference uh, and I just felt that was just just a smidgen OP so I swapped that for the Invictus because I like the idea that well my missions for a start in uh, use the ships a lot more often than the the other quests do um, and so it gives them a little bit more reason to exist really the the other the other quest the actual official lord of the rings quest the grey adams quest very rarely use the ships uh very rarely so and it didn't matter anyway because i was out questing them as as it is so the my quests hopefully will have a little bit more of a challenge in terms of the ship so i swapped it to the invictus um the invictus is pretty powerful probably the most powerful ship i've got um uh based on one of the, my short story and uh so yeah so four will Six attack, six defense, sixteen hull. Um, it's ranged. It doesn't exhaust to attack or defend. Uh, so I'll just basically be using that for the defense ability, which is great. Um, and at the planning action, you choose uh, one of the effects below to apply to apply until the end of the round. So you either choose the mission effect or you, cho or you choose the combat effect. If you choose the mission effect during the mission phase, all spirit and law characters you control gain plus one will until the end of the phase. So it's all characters, not just heroes. If you choose the combat effect, then during the combat phase, all leadership and tactics characters you control gain plus one attack until the end of the phase. Um, so it gives you a, quite a bit of uh, adaptability, but you need to make a decision at the start. So at the start, during the um, during the planning phase, so after refresh has occurred, so during, during planning, which is... Um, so after resource, so you've added a resource and all that sort of stuff. You refresh back down here, actually. Um, something I learned to uh, my great delight using this deck about the play as a player action phase directly after you refresh. Um, so yeah, that comes in handy. Um, so the yeah, so during after the resource phase, you get the planning phase, which is when you then normally play ally and attachment cards and all that sort of stuff. Um, note that you can actually play use the villier action because you're not actually planning anything you're just using the villier action to use the villier effect um which i don't have here because it's in the deck somewhere um to actually put it into play so it's not it doesn't you don't have to wait for the actually the planning phase although there is um some conjecture on that i read one forum thing that says that you do have to wait it can only be during the planning phase i read another one that says that it doesn't have to be because it is still an action so i've, I've read more that says you can versus than more than some that says that you can't so i'm going with that um the yeah so then in the planning phase you then uh choose which one you want to do so if you know it's gonna be a quest heavy thing do that one <coughs> if you know it's going to be a combat heavy thing do that one very simple um i was also using uh the one ring so the stone the stone of goal is my version of the one ring 
well, the Trek version of the One Ring, and Inner Strength is one of the Master Cards that comes with it. And I was using those as well. I did actually put those on to Tala so that she could defend and stuff. But I just found that I wasn't really using them. Um, I very, very, very rarely used the One Ring's ability. Um, I was really just using the Master Strength thing to give give her plus one defense so that she could defend and stuff. But very rarely used the actual one ring ability and so having the detriment of using the one ring because your your threat thing goes down by five so it actually it's for you fail at 45 instead of at 50 and um if to laugh for whatever reason dies then um you lose the game so it just it wasn't worth having it in the end so just it, i got rid of it because it's plus it takes up the card slot for you to use um your deck has to go down to 48 so you have to take into account those two cards so Got rid of that. Um, the other change going all the way back to my conversation about Seston, uh, Seston. I don't know how you pronounce it. Um, the guy who sort of created this deck or this this archetype. Um, yeah, he normally has his deck has Arwen, Alron, and um, Tactics Arwen. Uh, I did. I was using that, but I decided that it was um, just to sort of mix it up a bit. I'd use um, Female Q, who is my version of Galadriel. So I've actually got Arwen, Alron, Galadriel, three Nodor nobles, noble elves. Um, that's quite a coincidence. Three ladies as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, uh, I haven't actually played with this combo yet, so I'm pretty intrigued on how that's going to work. Uh, it basically means two noble elves with rings. Um, the equivalent of the of Vilia's Vilia is the. Um, Iconian doorway <laughs> so you'll see that when it comes out um, and Gal when you play Galadriel you usually team her up with two cards uh, two one cost cards called the mirror Galadriel's mirror and her ring which is called something like Nenya um, so instead of Nenya and the mirror I've actually combined those two into one single card um, so it, which is called the continuum pendant and if I can get that onto her that'd be good um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. I think it's going to be a bit of fun. So there may be, uh, like I said, this is the first time I've played it using this combo. Um, so I'm pretty used to the other combo, but I should be okay. Maybe a couple of little things. So if I do miss something, don't yell at me. It's all good. Um, and yeah, let's start from the top and sort of work our way down, eh? So let's start with uh, Kobayashi Maru. Let's sort of go down from there. Um, like I said, I have been working hard on some... Uh, well, I haven't been doing work, like actual paying the bills work. I've um, been working on some other quests and stuff, so like I'm really trying to get... I was working on a first contact deck, but then I was like, I just, I'm just i tired of Borg. <laughs> it's like, there's only so much Borg you can have. So uh, I'm trying to make this Year of Hell deck uh, quest work. I just think uh, it's pretty epic. Um, I'm trying to make it as epic as those episodes really should have been. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. Uh, plus, um, I got some suggestions for some decks uh, for some missions as well. So yeah, work on those as well. Um, but anyway, let's do this. So I've already set the starting threat. Uh, I got my cards there. I haven't drawn my hand yet because we haven't started this bit up here. So let's do it. Kobayashi Maru. Start eight two two six eight. While on patrol on the neutral zone, your ship receives a distress signal from the civilian freighter Kobayashi Maru. It has hit a cloaked mine while travelling along the neutral zone border. It has hit a. It has drifted into it, rapidly losing power, hull integrity, and life support. Just doing a quick test of the of the volume. I think it might actually. Um, testing, 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 testing. I'm just gonna bump myself up a bit. Testing one, two, three. Testing, testing, testing. All right. Hopefully that's that's worked a bit. We'll see how it goes. Um, if it hasn't, please let me know. Okay. A nearby spatial anomaly is making sensor readings difficult and there's no way to verify the distress signal and there's no other ships nearby to assist. 
Set up. You cannot use a ship hero over printed hit points. Oh! <laughs> you cannot use a ship hero over printed hit points value higher than 14. <laughs> oh, jeez. Well, so much for that. Um, can't even use the layout. Let's use... Let's use the Enterprise. Oh, jeez. That was unexpected. I completely forgot about that. So we've got the original Enterprise and what does the Stargazer do? No. Um. Can't even use the D. Can't even use the C. Well, I could use Voyager. She would be pretty good during uh, against the Borg. Yeah, things do. Wait, what is it? What's the exact wording? Can I use a ship here over pretty key points by higher than 14? So it can be 14 or less. Alright, so what does the Phoenix do? Reduce, reduce the cost for attachments on the Phoenix by 2. But I'm going to try and get them for free, so I don't really need that. Oh, you can spend resources. So if I'm charge, you can make it better for attacking. So that might come in handy. Yeah, that might be handy because the Klingon ships, you just get swarmed with these things. Although the Titan, that's pretty sweet. Titan is a cool ship. Doesn't exhaust the commits of the mission. It's got a high defense. What do the Klingon ships hit for? There you go, so 3-3. Three, three. Well, even the Enterprise can take it. I just like the idea of using the Enterprise because it is just cool. Oh, I could use a simulated Voyager. Now, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take the Enterprise A because it's I just like it. <laughs> it's just it's just it's classic. Um and it's got a ridiculously cool look. I mean it is just a classic look. I'm gonna keep this separate for when I get to a quest where it doesn't matter what ship I'm using. Um Yeah, this ship's ability is just nuts. It lets you uh take you can spend resources to take an enemy or location from the discard pile and put it into the victory display. So it would pair really well. There's a, there's a particular hero that uh, gets tougher the more things are in the victory display. I just can't remember who that who that character is. It, 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 it would pair very well with them. But that's that's insane. Um, that's an insane ability. And uh, plus, it's just cool. The Enterprise. Look at it. Look at it. It's just beautiful. Alright, so once we've established that, let's get back to it. What A? Alright, one B. Now technically before we get to this point you're meant to draw your hand and not do all that sort of stuff. So um so let's do that. Let's draw the hand. Now the idea of this deck is obviously to get uh Vilia or the Iconium doorway in your opening hand if possible, or something that will let you find it. So this this deck is really all about getting hold of the doorway and uh, the pendant as quickly as possible uh, and then once you've got that just putting out those allies 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 allies. there's more allies on here in this deck than I've ever had ever um, and allies I've never played before because I just thought well I'm never gonna be able to get these characters out like characters like Jay Hayes and Hugh and Data as allies they just they just cost too much five and six and such and such so um, it's just, it's just painful. There's no point. So, either opening hand or some way to get them into the hand. Oh, the other, the second thing about this deck is threat control. So keeping the threat down as, as much as possible. So, all right, let's do it. One, two, three. One, two, three. 
Um, okay, so getting Federation membership uh, is good. Uh, that's the Steward of Gondor equivalent. Uh, but no doorway and no way to get a doorway. So none of these cards let me search the deck for anything. Um, having him and then the, him is, is good, but no point since I can't actually cast them. So that's the other thing as well. Like I've got allies in here that I would normally not be able to play. Sarek, Worf, and this dude, veteran Klingon mercenary, because, oh, and Chekhov. In fact, all of these allies, I can't play any of them normally because I don't have them. But the doorway circumvents that. It just says put it in play. It doesn't say play it. Uh, you're not spending resources for it. So you can actually play ally uh, attachments and allies from houses that you don't have technically have resources for um, and even if you don't Talar can actually do it anyway so Talar can uh, use her resources to pay for allies of leadership spirit and tactics and Vulcan trait um, anyway even if I was going to actually spend the money to put them out there it's just it's really really cool and when she can't play is law uh, but that's alright she is law so she can play it. <laughs> so she can essentially play any sphere she wants. Is really what it is. So pretty cool. Uh, but anyway, so no doorway and no way to get a doorway. So I'm gonna mulligan. Okay, now in a normal game, you would be thinking, holy crap, two Qs or Gandalfs. Um, how sweet is that? But no, that's actually bad. Because that means that the two cues that I have in my deck are now in my hand, and now the only way to play them is to actually play them for reals, not for free with uh, the doorway. So that's actually a bit of a bummer. But I did get the pendant. So all is not lost. So I do at least have a way to get it. And I'm going to draw a new card anyway, so that might be the doorway. So either way, I've at least got the pendant for female Q, so she will be able to search the top 10 cards um, for a card and add it to my hand. Hopefully in those top 10 cards is the doorway. And then I can start lay, laying the smack down. All right, so I've drawn my six cards, so they're back to here. You must make a decision. Attempt to rescue the Kobayashi Maru. Crew and passages, which involves via the initial zone, thereby revoking the Klingons of the hostile action or possibly an all out war, or banning the Kobayashi Maru preventing war with the Klingons, but leaving the crew and passengers freights to capture and therefore probable death. Yeah, <laughs> my, 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 my selection here female Q wouldn't give a crap. Um, none, of them, none of them actually been denoted as being uh, as actually capped as the captain trait, so no one's actually technically in charge. So. Female Q wouldn't give a crap about the Kobayashi Maru. Um, Tala, they're a bunch of humans, so she probably wouldn't care either. Um, she's not racist, she's just, you know, Vulcans are the superior race in her eyes, you know, it is what it is. Um, but Deanna, of course, would be like, no, 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 we have to we have to rescue these people. So, um, Deanna being a Starfleet, Star, Starfleet ship and Deanna being the only Starfleet person, uh, and then she's the one technically in charge and she would say yep no worries we'll go and try and rescue them if you choose option one proceed to 2a i do choose option one. Oh, there you go six up so i'm not cheating they want no cheating you choose to rescue the kobayashi maru's crew and passengers as your starship enters the neutral zone the communications officer loses contact with a crippled vessel Klingon warships then quickly appear on an intercept course. Attempts to contact them are met with radio silence and they open fire. When revealed, search the encounter deck for two Katinga class cruisers per player and place them into the staging area, then shuffle the encounter deck. Oh, the very first card was going to be a Katinga cruiser. There we go. Two Katinga cruisers. Oh. Yeah, they look pretty lethal. And shuffle the encounter deck. Get Sidemi shuffled. And uh, once enough progress has been placed on the stage, move to stage 3B. So I need 10 progress. I've got two ships to deal with. Uh, their threat engagement 
is 27, uh, which I already meet. So these guys will engage me on the very first turn. So this better be the greatest planning stage I've ever had. Otherwise, uh, I could be in a bit of strife. Although I don't exhaust the defense. I can defend both of them. I just won't be able to kill them. And they're going to engage and they're going to stay with me because I won't be able to kill them. There's only one thing there. So, All right, let's see how this deck works. So resource, resource, resource. And draw a card. It's not a doorway, which is a shame. So let's try the other way. Um, I'm going to throw this dude to the walls, which activates Arwen's ability. Oh, Deanna, sorry. Deanna's ability to give uh, a Starfleet, Metazoid, or Telepath character a resource. So she can either give it to herself, um, or she can give it to one of those types. Starf Starfleet, Metazoid, or Telepath. And the only other person she can give it to, if it's not her, is Talar. She can't give it to female Q, because uh, she's in a Q alien. So uh, either Deanna or Talar gets it. Um, doesn't really, in this particular matter, it doesn't really, this particular thing doesn't really work. So I'm just going to do one, two. Uh, give it to Talara and then use those two to give female Q the pendant and then I'm going to use it straight away so the pe the pendant is only able to be attached to her she gains the resource uh, the law resource so she's now spirit and law um, I can either as a quest action exhaust female Q to add her will to another character's will into the end of the phase so her four gets added to somebody else usually Deanna um, or as an action, I can exhaust continuum pendant to search the top 10 cards of the deck for a card and add it to your hand. Shuffle the rest back in the deck and discard a random card. Uh, it's also important to point out what she does. So she cannot quest, attack, or defend, which is why you add hers to somebody else. So she's not technically a, a questing, so she's protected from Necromancer's Reach and all those other cards that do those sort of things. Um, she still needs to exhaust to do it, though. Um, so any, any treachery that says target an exhausted character still gets affected um, and uh, allies you control do not exhaust to commit to the quest during the round they enter play which is pretty sweet uh, and I can either as an action I can exhaust her to choose a player and that player reduces their threat by one and draws a card once per round pretty sweet uh, but I'm not going to do that I'm actually going to be using um, exhausting the pendant itself to search the top 10 cards for a card um, See, two of the guys that this there's just no point in uh, playing them normally because <laughs> they're just too ridiculous. Uh, mouse is playing up. Come on, come on, mouse. Don't let me down. All right, uh, four. This fella. Fella. Should be fit. Oh, what a disaster! None of them. The doorway is not in any of them. That's crazy. Um, and so it's either so it's not the doorway, and it's not Opaka, who is the stargazer equivalent for uh, for this mod. So that's really disappointing. So what I'm going to do is I get to take one of them. Um, Uh, so I'm just going to take one I'm going to take this this one yeah I'm going to take this one um, and so I get to take one and then put them back in the deck and then randomly discard is it random? and then it's got a random card from my hand so yeah. Well, actually, in that case, I'm going to take this one because it's random. Uh, so it gives me a bit more of a fighting chance. Put these nine back in. And hope for the best later on. That's pretty bad. So let's uh, discard a card at random. So the card at random, I just turn them upside down and do that, and then just grab the top card. This will, there you go. So, put these back in my hand. 
That is a bummer. Oh well. So that's the end of the planning phase. Let's go to the quest phase. I'm going up against four at the very least to start off with. Um, so let's exhaust female Q to give Deanna plus four. So she's doing seven. And I'm not going to go with the ship because it needs to be defending. So just Deanna on her own. Seven. Well, I could technically do. Hmm. I mean, she's not going to be able to defend, so might as well go for it, eh? Just do it. She's not doing anything else. So, ten. Ten in one hit. Come at me, Klingons. Alright. Treachery. When revealed, reveal X additional cards from your counter deck where X is the number of players in the game. So, it just basically just means it surges to one more because it's only me. In the game, I could technically I could stop it from happening, but I'm not going to waste my lunar field just on that. Just get another card. Uh, there we go. Inside the neutral zone. Uh, that's not the actual location. There, that's something about. It. So it's two, four, seven. Uh, so I win by three. Uh, travel phase, so we'll go to the new side of the new zone. Now it's while inside the neutral zone is the actual location, each player must raise his threat by an additional point during the refresh phase. It's not like the gender language, I should say their threat, but uh, by an additional point during the refresh phase. So that's cool. Um, and then off to combat or engagement phase, and yeah, they both do engagement checks and they both engage. So this one, and this one. All right, no stopping it from happening. So let's ha let's see how it goes. Uh, I don't have to exhaust to defend. So obviously I'm defending. Four versus three. There is a shadow effect. Deal X shadow cast this attack where X is the number of players in the game. So I guess another shadow cast. Great. And no shadow effect. So I got a free shadow card for no reason. Uh, three versus four, no effect. Uh, okay, defending again. No shadow effect. And no damage. So we'll hit back. Um, actually, there's no point because it doesn't get past the shell. Absolutely no point at all. So that's really what it's going to be like. It's going to be a stalemate. It's going to be defend, 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 defend. It can defend a whole heap of shots, but it can't actually shoot back until it gets an upgrade that gives it plus one phases, and then I can actually do some damage. So. Uh, or like an ally, a ship ally that can come in and help me out. So we'll get rid of these shadow cards. Um, insert these. Uh, inside the neutral zone means I raise threat by one extra. So it's the end of the round. Um, raise threat, one, two. Uh, and then refresh. Now at this point, if I had the doorway, I'd be doing the, you know, putting checking cards and stuff, but I don't, so we're just gonna go as normal. So resource, so restart, so new round, resource, 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 show card. That's a real disappointment. Hugh, I mean, it's cool, but getting him out is gonna be hard, so. Um, a Stargate or something like that would have been cool. So let's do it again. Let's see what happens. Exhaust and do the 10 cards. Oh, phase for a race. Not bad. Yeah, so 
phaser array and ship refit are not, uh, are not bad options either one because I can at least then choose I actually need both of these so I can, that'll give me plus one that'll give me plus one that'll give me abutment for fight which means I can actually do some hits um, but I can only take one so and then of course it's random so you might actually end up losing it little bummer Yeah, let's grab the refit. The other benefit of doing this is if you don't get the card, at least you get the reshuffle, so it gives you maybe a better option of getting it, who knows. Alright, so that's been done, so now I can randomly choose a card from hand. Okay, top card is you. Well, I'm cool with that. Is pretty hard to afford. I don't really need them anyway. This this mission's all about ships, so I need ship stuff, which I will use. One, two, and actually, no. One, two, three, four. I've got five. Kill a ship. Should I queue and kill a ship? All queue and draw hands. Oh, I can draw three cards. Yes, yes, yes. I'm gonna queue and draw three cards. Now this is a this is a gamble. Well, could have been worse. <laughs> So one, two, three, four, four, five. Um, yeah, could have been could have been much much worse. So I'm gonna sacrifice the grenades to give Deanna an extra resource. Um, actually, it is bad because that means I now can't cast either of these. These can only be cast using the effect. Oh man, this is just painful. So they'll be sacrificed to Deanna's ability. <laughs> Give us a resource. It's only once per round, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Um, all right, so I don't need to super quest, so I can just give. Um, oh, I should have taken that off. I'm about to put it back on anyway. So actually, no, I'm going to do the. Her action is going to be to lower threat by one and draw a card. Oh yeah, finally. So not the doorway, but at least now it makes it a bit easier to see what's coming up. So not the greatest, but still good. A puck is still good. All right, she's part of the combo, so that's good. All right, so that means um, she's not doing the plus four willpower shenanigans um, but that's cool so it'll be Deanna and Tla and Q and Q might as well contribute so 3, 6, 10 so it's 10 still Alright, so sensor jamming goes on my deck and stops you from drawing cards. Now, normally I'd be like, you know what, who cares? Um, but I just, I need, I need the doorway. I can't have my cards being blocked. That's bollocks. So, yeah, it looks like I will actually be saying no. Seems like, it seems like a waste, but I just, screw it. So beat it by 10 because it's zero. So three goes to that. Seven goes on here. Which is 10, which is enough to beat the progress. Proceed to 3B. The science officer is finally able to get the sensors working and completes their scan of the Kobayashi Maru just before the last clone ship attacks and destroys it. 
The marine was empty with no life lines or operating life support. It was a cruel trap. You order your ship out of the neutral zone immediately, but the Klingons won't let you go without a fight. So the encounter deck and or discard pile for two continuous class cruisers per player and place them in the stage mirror. Uh, let's do it through here. Shuffle the encounter deck. Uh, all Klingon ships must be destroyed to complete this mission. So that's going to be a painfully long process if I can't get some bonuses happening. So, yeah. Okay, right, so Q goes to a discard pile. Um, threat goes up by one at the end of the round. Refresh and start of a new round. Resource, resource, resource. Draw a card. Oh, come on. All right. Um, okay, so sacrifice flagship to. Hala, who will cast Parker. Do I then use and look at the top five cards? Hello, ladies. No, come on. Oh man. This is just this is just brutal. Wait. I have stuffed up. I didn't have a different, a new attack phase. Oh man. <laughs> All right, let's just finish this off. Um, So it doesn't matter that a park is there. Um, these guys will engage. How do I just skip right over the attack phase? That is just bad. Skip right over the combat phase. Oh, I, I was too demoralized, that's what it was. One, two, three, four. Mainly because it's just going to look like this the entire time. Really, it's all just going to be this, right? So I don't exhaust to defend. So it's just four. Three versus four. Don't care. Human character does not count as defense. Oh! Boom. Three points, uh, three points of damage. There you go. Don't care. Don't care. So... Yeah, getting that one is uh, dangerous of exploration. That was pretty harsh. Actually, cop some damage, but other than that. And then there's no point in trying to hit back. Okay, so then end the round, get resources, do a park card, do the park card thing. Um, I'm going to use female Q. So the first five I know. Of the Parker, I already know, don't really care. Now let's do the next five. <gasps> there it is! Oh, yeah, right. Now, the only downside to this is 
obviously that's the one I picked, right? The Iconian Gateway. Cannot be attached to a Starfleet hero. Attached to a law or spirit hero. If attached to a spirit hero, to a law hero, they gain the spirit resource icon. If attached to a spirit hero, they gain the law resource icon. Exhaust Iconian Gateway and the attached hero to reveal the top card of the deck. You can immediately play or put into play the revealed card for no cost if able. Otherwise, move the revealed card to the bottom of your deck. So if you don't want to play it, you put it to the bottom of your deck. If you do want to play it, you put it in. So basically it says that if you if you can play it like an attachment, then play it. If you can't play it, and remember, attachment has to be viable, viable as well, right? It has to be able to be attached to somebody. Uh, if you can't play it for whatever reason, because it's, it's an event or something, um, uh, then it goes to Bobby Deck. Simple as that. Um, and it says, it does, notice it does say may. Uh, well, it says can. You can immediately put it in play. Uh, all right, so. Yeah, so that goes into my hand. These all go back into shuffled back in. Now here's the only problem with doing the pendant version of that versus the opaka version of that, because they go back in shuffled, and then I randomly do a card from my hand, as you as you've seen me do a couple of times already, right? And if it's the the gateway. Might as well just give up the game. <laughs> like that that's just it's just pe that's punching the monitor level of annoyance. So Alright, let's do it. Yeah, I don't care. Alright, so boink, 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 back to my hand. Thank you very much. And Yeah, one, two. Thank you. Straight on to Tala. He's the only one. Um, well, technically, female Q could play it as well. So, Talar there. That's the other beauty of it. If you're doing the um, Dolgar R quest, uh, actually, any quest that tells you to get rid of a hero, if they get rid of Deanna, I mean, yeah, you lose the questing and stuff, but at least either of them could still use the gateway, so that's pretty handy. Um, yeah, there it is. Bob, straight on there, and I'm just going to use it straight away. Um, now, it is a blind. I'm going to use I'm using it blind because... Uh, I've already used a Parker. I don't want to go. I want to run that back. That would be cheating. So let's do it blind. Can't use it. Simple as that. Now the reason I can't use it from everything that I've read. Because I was like, really? Why can't I use it? Sort of stuff. And the reason I can't use it is because it needs an action window to use. It's not something that just gets played straight away. The effect doesn't immediately actually happen. You have to do it during the action phase. So, yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird, but I I guess I mean I guess it does make sort of make sense. But there you go. Uh, it is it is what it is. So instead, I'm going to use female Q's ability. Uh, to level threat by one and draw a card. See, now that would have been better if, I, if I'd done the draw card, if I'd known, see, I would have done that to get that, and then uh, the Iconian Gateway would have put her into play straight away. So, you know, it is what it is. Alright, um... Question. Only doing six, because... Don't need to do a huge amount. Oh shit, that's painful. So six versus two. Win by four. Uh, this guy will engage. So this is this is pretty painful. I need I need upgrades. Ship upgrades.
need ship upgrades. All right, so let's just do it. Obviously, I don't need to exhaust to defend, so let's do it. Uh, attacking enemy gets plus one, plus two if it's undefended. It's not undefended, and plus one doesn't do anything, so move it on. Choosing this card, one attachment for the defending character. If it's undefended, discard all attachments. So it doesn't have any attachments. So, pick them up. Gone. That would have been pretty harsh if I did have one of the plus one attacker defense uh, attachments, though. Jeez. Uh, resolve the one revealed effect. Okay. There we go. And. No attachment. Oh, jeez. It's good to get those two out of the, out of the way. Having to deal with those would have been pretty bad. Cool. Right, start. Fresh, 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 fresh. Resource, resource, resource. Um, I'm going to use. Um, well, I go to I so I go to draw a card. I can't. Spins the jam and then gets gone. I've now missed my draw a card phase, but I can still do all the other stuff. So let's a pucker. I don't really need Starfleet training, so I put usually put Starfleet training on Talar so that she can def uh, use the Arcanian Gateway ability because you have to exhaust her at the same time. Um, and uh, use Starfleet training to, to untap her. Um, but I don't really care about that. So uh, let's put them back in actually I want inner light so I want that to be the next card that I draw so let's put them back in this order and then put delta on top right so if I put delta on top put them all back on the top of the deck and then go gateway lo and behold Delta for free, <laughs> which I mean it's not that exciting because uh, I don't have we really have to worry about locations and stuff. But still, it's still cool to get a free character, and that's essentially it. I just get free stuff. Um, but I'm going to get rid of this and use the added ability to give a resource, and then use those two resources to. Put this under here so actually now I can start hitting back uh, the bonus that I choose is attack so it gets plus one attack now which is great I want to save up the rest of my resources so I can get the other Q out and just use it to just kill a cruiser. Make it less painful. Alright, so questing. Actually, I'm going to use her ability to lower threat by one and draw a card, which I know is inner light. Um, well, it's uh, Eidetic Memory, which is the Trek version of Inner Light, um, which is what you use for Deanna. You sacrifice it to Deanna. It can only be cast from your um, discard pile. So you sacrifice it to Deanna to, for her free resource business, and then you play it from the freaking and you draw a card. So it's pretty cool. Um, and then Quest. Three, five. Doesn't have to be a huge amount. 
I would normally get a progress on the location, but there is none. Oh, uh, speak of the devil, there's one. So I win by four. Okay, so I now have enough to beat it. Once I beat all the ships, I will, of course, travel to there. Um, I can choose and ready a character I control. Um, her ability is only once per round. And I don't really care if anybody else is readied. Yeah. I don't really care about the rest of them, so... Yeah, ready. Um, yeah, combat. Let's do it. If I could use female Q's ability again, I will do it. But it says once per round, so I can't do it. All right. Um, no. Oh my god, that's so frustrating. Choose and discard an attachment. So there it goes. Thank you. Uh, that is a real bummer. Oh, man, nothing, 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 and then plus one, which is nothing. Oh, jeez. That's very demoralizing. Because it means I essentially now can't do anything. There's only one other card in here that ups the attack, which would put it to four, which means I'd be putting four points of damage each turn. So Q will get rid of one, and then it'll take one, four, eight, twelve, sixteen rounds. Sixteen rounds are going back and forth to win. Which could be done, but at 16 rounds of going back and forth. I mean, it's, that's that's incredibly boring. Boring to play, boring to watch. Um, there's no other cues my last cue, so no, and just that would mean hoping to get that. So how many more rounds before the 16 rounds? There is a ship in here that can help. There is a nebula in here that has a three attack. So I'd be attacking for six. So I'd be doing three points. Uh, I'm not going to throw in the towel just yet. We'll see how it goes. So, uh, end of the round. Uh, 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 uh. Um, I will spend one, two, three, four, five to put Q into play and kill one of these guys. Just clicks his fingers and it's dead. Um, I'll quest with him in a second. Uh, let's Apaka. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Um, actually have queued first should have female queued first so it randomized my deck a bit because I already knew these guys were here see what I'm saying just not paying attention there's just too much intricacies my brain can't handle it so I might as well put that at the top because it means that Can actually use it and gateway which gives me that which I knew was coming I can use it straight away I'm gonna put it on here I should put it on her because I can exhaust her to do the plus four will and then um, stuff like trainer and pop her back up and do the other stuff that she does. So, yeah, let's put it on her. Um, 
not that I need a huge amount of quests to do this one, but in later quests that would definitely definitely help, right? Alright, so questing. Well, let's not risk questing with the other just in case there's one of those shenanigans on there. So let's use um, her ability to put plus four and let's put it on this other. They're working together. The cues. Teamwork. Um, so he's actually doing eight because I really don't need much more than that. He's just questing on his own. Oh no, let's do, let's do ten so that I get my free progress. No, I don't need it. I don't. Let's let's not get silly. I don't need it. Let's go for eight. Cool. So I win by six. I only need three for that, so that's gone. And then one, two, three on there. And then of course. Federation border, which means I draw two cards, which is a shame because I automatically know that one of them is going to be one that I'm never going to cast. But I get that, which is great, but then I get Selecus. That is a pain in the bum. He was set up to be my next doorway person. I mean, six. I'm just, I'm never going to cast this guy. Look at this douchebag. He just looks like a douchebag. I mean, he is. He's one of my own characters, so I can. I'm actually allowed to say that. I can say that he's a douchebag because I know he is because I wrote him. So, yeah. Um, it was uh, quite a, a lucky find this picture when I found this picture on the internet because I was like, this is exactly what he would look like. <laughs> like he thinks he's God's gift. Um, yeah, so he fits. Uh, Yeah, let's do it. Cursing successful, so combat obviously. Uh, before we get into combat, I'll use the action window. I deal the shadow cards and then apply your action. Let's use the pendant. So it just at least it, it shuffles up. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, there's a card I need, so. Thank you. Straight from my hand, tenth one, uh, and then shuffle these back in. Um, and then I have to randomly discard a card. So if I randomly discard the phaser array, that's it. That's essentially game over. Flip, and here we go. Nope. Thank you. Now, I can't use it because it's past the playing phase. We're actually in the combat phase now. So next round, I'll, I'll cast it for sure. Not that I've, I've got resources anyway. So there you go. Um, so yeah, normal thing. No worries. Oh, <laughs> thank God I got that down. I didn't, wasn't able to put the attachment on there. So no, nothing, nothing. And plus one, so no effect. Relentless enemies, man. Piss off. How many of those are there in there? That's crazy. Um, that's the third one. That's the fourth one. Oh no, it's a lot. And of course, there's no point hitting back. So, young Q goes away. Refresh, refresh. Uh, sorry, that should have gone up by one. Resource, resource, resource. And draw a card. Uh, pendant, don't care, I'm going to instantly sacrifice it. Uh, actually, 
second class. Okay, Emily. Gain a resource. And then spend the resource to get it back and your attack. Cool. Cool. Alright. Um Yeah. One, two, phaser array. Actually shoot back now, which is great. Mm. Might as well try this. Let's do it. Went to all the trouble to get it, might as well use it. Hmm. Now that's interesting. I can actually do this. Attach when the enemy engage with a player. I can use it. So it doesn't attack. Oh, there's no point. Absolutely no point. Because it still gets a shadow card. It doesn't attack, but then I still have to defeat it to win the game anyway, right? They all have to be destroyed. That's what the condition says. So I'll use it instead of just throwing it on the bottom of my deck. Um, but still. It's pointless. Okay, so. Questing. Um, Use her ability. Even if I don't use the card, I still get the threat reduction. And then I can train in her, bring her back up. Um, so three. Four, five. I still feel that I'm not playing this deck correctly. I must admit, there's something about it I think I'm doing wrong. So I'm only doing five. I do get a free progress. And then when revealed, each player raises their threat by one for each character control that's not committed to the mission. Oh! Painful. Not committed. One, two, three, four. Wow. We're going to win by five. I need three on that. And two more on there. Uh, now, I'm not adding to the staging area. Sorry, I had a bit of a sound thing there. I'm not too sure what happened there. Um, the, yeah, I'm not adding to the stage area, so I don't shuffle the encounter deck, and so they don't get any shadow cards, which is good because I would have shuffled in and then it would have been that bloody card in again. So at least I'll have one round where I actually can actually do some stuff. Um, but anyway, no shadow cards, so they all, so they, he doesn't attack, they all attack, doesn't do anything gonna hit back and do one point of damage and so here here it begins I'm doing one point of damage <laughs> yeah it's gonna take forever I don't have anything that lets me go through my discard pile so her thing Discard a card. Discard a random card from your hand. So it's not go back to the deck, it's just discard it. So Yeah. I, I think that's pretty much it. Um, there's really no point in sitting here for uh, 16 rounds trying to kill stuff. Uh, there's not another queue to get. 
there's no way for me to stop to actually kill them faster than 16 rounds. Um, if I'd had environmental suit in here, one of the other characters could have been, you could have given it to Worf or something or whatever, Selechus, I don't know, whatever. But it's obviously just not going to happen. So I'm just going to call it. Uh, this has been a fascinating test. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced I'm not playing this deck correctly. I'm absolutely sure that one of the cards that I couldn't play, I, just, I put it into the discard pile instead of on the bottom of my deck. Are you sure that happened? Um, pretty sure there was a round where I didn't tap to Lar when I used the gateway. Not having the gateway straight away was a pain. But during this quest, it doesn't really... It doesn't really matter because there's very limited ways that I can fight the ships. Um, so I should redo it so that I put a couple of more phaser arrays in there um, and a couple of more allies ships as well. Because why not, right? I mean, the gateway lets me bring in allies. Makes no sense that there's a ship coming through the gateway, but that's all right. It is what it is. There's no, it doesn't make any sense that the ring lets you summon people either. So, but so yeah, I'll put some more allies in there and then. Um, go from there I just, I, I'm very adverse to creating the deck specific to the quest like creating a deck to beat that quest and I don't really know why because it's it's been proven time and time again that it's a fundamental part of this game is that you it's, you can't be stubborn about it it's not, it's not like one deck will beat every single quest which is why I was fascinated about this quest. This deck is because this deck is supposedly meant to be able to beat just about every quest. Which I thought was pretty cool. But that obviously doesn't apply to the Trek mod because it's unique. The whole ship element of it makes it completely different. If I was able to hit back with my normal characters, which I am, then I need to be able to I need to alter the deck in order to make that happen. So this stubborn not changing your deck thing uh, I'm just gonna let that go man it's a it's a flaw in my play style that that means that I just I, I, yeah, I get situations like this where I, I mean I could I mean I could technically win I mean I could sit here for another hour pinning them back for one every time but what's the point um, so yeah I'm gonna reset redo the deck to have a couple more ship allies a couple of more phaser arrays and uh, yeah do it again it's always it's the fun of doing it finding the flaws and and playing 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 i love this game so much i could, I could play it all day and all night so anyway thanks very much for uh listening to my rambling um i hope you enjoyed that uh gives you a bit of an insight to my brain um and this uh this new deck i hope you like this new deck if uh i do know i'm not playing it right um so no need I need to point that out, uh, but uh, I am going to uh, yeah have to come back to this. Yeah, I just I just noticed that if I am in the program that does the recording, I can hover over the cards that are in TTS, and it registers them. How cool is that? I'm actually not in TTS. I'm in the recording program and it registers the fact that I'm moving my mouse around. That is pretty cool. Anyway, enough rambling from me. Have a good night. Look after yourselves. Look after each other. Be good. Talk again soon. Thanks for watching.